Is Rocket Lab stock about to take flight, or is this company headed for a rapid, unscheduled disassembly? That's the question we're going to answer in today's video. Compared to a year ago, the stock itself hasn't moved very much, usually just hovering between 4 and $5 per share, with the exception of July this year, when it went all the way up to $8 per share, but since then it has declined and now it's currently trading for about $4.45 per share as of the time of filming this video. And in the past year, Rocket Lab stock has only gained about 5.7%. Compare that to the S&P 500, which gained over 12% in that same period. So will Rocket Lab stock ever see a period of sustained growth in its stock? And if so, when will that day finally arrive? One thing that's put a lot of pressure on a lot of companies lately is the higher interest rates. This makes it a lot more expensive for companies to borrow money in case they need to raise more funds. And the companies that need to raise funds the most are those that are unprofitable. And guess what? Rocket Lab still isn't profitable right now. In the third quarter of 2023, Rocket Lab reported a net loss of $40 million, and that was 17% higher than where it was a year prior. But part of their expenses is research and development, and included in that is Rocket Lab's next generation launcher, Neutron. It'll expand Rocket Lab's launch market beyond just small satellites, with Neutron being capable of launching larger and more massive payloads, including satellite mega constellations like Starlink or Amazon's Project Kuiper. On top of that, Neutron is being designed with a fully reusable first stage and payload fairing capable of doing propulsive landings like what SpaceX does with their Falcon 9 rockets. And Rocket Lab has also seen success recovering the first stage of their Electron rocket. With Electron, they basically just parachute it down into the ocean gently and then fish it out with a boat. But they actually did take one of the engines off of one of those recovered Electron boosters and reuse it on another mission later in the year. And that mission actually turned out to be completely successful. But that isn't to say Rocket Lab had a completely smooth year. Actually, on the very next mission, a few minutes into flight, they experienced a problem after the stage separation, and that resulted in them not being able to deliver the satellites to their intended orbit. Rocket Lab then launched an in-depth investigation on the flight failure and eventually found a probable cause for the issue, so it seems like Electron launches have finally resumed. But prior to that failure, Rocket Lab launched seven successful Electron missions in 2023, and they had their first flight of their new Haste launch vehicle. This is a suborbital rocket they developed, and it's based on the Electron launch platform. So very similar design. You don't even really tell the difference if you're just looking at it on the launch pad. But rockets are only half of what Rocket Lab does these days. They also have an entire space system side of their business. This side of their business includes Rocket Lab's own satellite platform, Photon. It also includes radios, reaction wheels, star trackers, stage separators, flight software, and solar cells. So really a very full package here. Um, I don't think it's everything, you know, that's involved for building a satellite, but really they've, they've added a lot of things. And these have mostly come from four major acquisitions Rocket Lab has made over the past few years. So far in 2023, the space systems side of their business actually accounted for 66% of their total revenue and it has higher gross margins than their launch business. But maybe that will change with Electron flying more and more missions every year and Neutron eventually coming down the road. Moving on to Rocket Lab's income statement, this is for the third quarter of 2023. Their revenues were at $67.7 million, and you'll notice that's actually increased over the past year. Back in 2022, those were at $63 million. Now, I'd like to clarify here, these are Rocket Lab's total revenues across their launch business and space systems in the third quarter of 2023. And as we had just seen a few, or just a minute ago, we saw that the space systems business actually makes up most of Rocket Lab's revenue at this point in time. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at these revenue numbers from Rocket Lab. Then moving down to the cost of revenues, you'll see those were actually at $52.7 million, which actually decreased over the past year, despite those revenues increasing. So what this means is that the gross margins for Rocket Lab's overall business have been increasing in that time period. And you'll see that reflected here in the gross profit. 
being almost double what it was um, one year prior in 2022. Now, to really understand this, we again have to look at Rocket Lab's revenue broken down by their two major segments here, launch services and space systems. And you'll see that in 2023, in the third quarter, those launch services revenues were at $21.3 million, which was actually a little bit lower than what it was in 2022. But back then, it was almost at $23 million. And you, of course, we already saw the revenue had actually increased in this time period. And the source of that was their space systems business. That in the third quarter was at $46.3 million, which is about $6.2 million or so, more than it was the previous year. And as you can see with the uh, gross profit between these two businesses, the space systems business is a higher margin business. We, we already talked about that. So their space systems business is really what's been driving Rocket Lab's revenue growth for this third quarter year over year comparison. Moving back to the income statement, they've got research and development expenses of $26.6 million, about $9 million more than what they were in 2022. And there's a few major things responsible for this $26 million figure here. One of them is the continued development of their next generation neutron rocket. Another one is their photon spacecraft platform. They're continuing to expand the features and capabilities of that. The third thing would be electron recovery and reusability efforts. They're still, they still haven't completely hammered that down. They're still doing research and development um, for that. And then another thing is that they're expanding the product portfolio for their space systems components. Things like those star trackers, the radios, the stage separators, all of those things, they're, they're continuing to try and add new products to that space systems portfolio. Next up is their selling general and administrative expenses. Those came in at $27.2 million, a bit over $4 million more than what they were in 2022. So they've increased by uh, about 18% or so. Um, and, you know, that's that's nothing too out of the ordinary, in my opinion. As they continue to grow their business, they're going to continue to grow their SG&A expenses. Um, but, you know, taking all of those expenses here, uh, adding them up there, you get total operating expenses of $53.8 million in the third quarter and an operating loss after, you know, with the revenues minus those expenses, operating loss of $38.9 million. Now, as they continue to launch more rockets and build more spacecraft, Rocket Lab is expecting their gross margins to continue improving over time. And we've already seen that happening here between 2022 and 2023. And they're also expecting this um, to happen with their operating margins, with research and development expenses and selling general and administrative expenses. Basically, they're expecting their revenue to grow faster than their cost of revenues and their expenses. And ultimately, this comes down to economies of scale um, with their manufacturing, as well as recovery efforts and reusability, um, as both of those things would decrease the cost per launch as some of those overhead expenses and labor expenses and materials expenses get um, kind of flattened out over a larger number of launches and spacecraft that they're building. Moving down to the last few things on the income statement before we get onto the balance sheet, they've got interest expense of $1.4 million, a loss on foreign exchange of $120,000, other income of $1.2 million, and a loss before income taxes of $39.2 million. Then they had their provision for income taxes, $1.35 million, and all of this put together, this, bring, this brings their net loss down to $40 million $568,000 and their earnings per share, uh, let's see, net loss per share attributable to Rocket Lab um, shareholders is a loss of $0.08 cents per share. Moving on to Rocket Lab's balance sheet, as of September 30th, 2023, they had current assets, including cash and cash equivalents of $140.9 million, current marketable securities of $147.5 million, You'll notice both of these are lower than where they were in 2020 or at the end of December of 2022. So not not exactly one year ago, but um, three quarters ago, basically. Um, and the reason for that is, of course, Rocket Lab still 
isn't generating a profit from their actual business operations. So as they continue to expand for the time being, they're continuing to drain the cash that they have on hand, as well as their, their marketable securities play a role here as well. They had accounts receivable of $22.8 million, lower than where it was back in December. Uh, contract assets of $13 million, that's a bit higher. Inventories of $102.4 million, uh, that's also a bit higher than where it was at the end of December. Uh, prepaids and other current assets were at $68.3 million, um, a good amount higher than where they were a year ago. And then assets held for sale, they actually have $11.3 million there. They didn't have any of those um, back in December. Moving on to Rocket Lab's non-current assets, they've got property, plant, and equipment at $136 million, a good amount higher from where it was at the end of December. Um, and there's a reason for a lot of these um, fairly significant changes here. I'm going to get to them in just a minute. Um, but they've also got intangible assets of $70.4 million. Goodwill, $71 million. That's completely flat since December. They haven't made any um, acquisitions in that time. And usually acquisitions are where that goodwill gets added here. Um, they've got right of use assets for operating leases, $44.9 million. Right of use assets for finance leases, $15.1 million. Marketable securities that are non-current. We already saw the current ones up there. But the non-current ones are $82 million. You'll notice that's actually increased a whole lot from where it was um, back at the end of December. So that is one place they've kind of moved some of their marketable securities, it seems like. Um, you know, a As you can see, it these are lower than where it was at the end of December. But they have also added um, like... 70 million dollars to their non-current marketable securities so um, not quite as bad as it might seem on the surface there then they have restricted cash of 3.6 million dollars deferred income tax assets of 3.3 million dollars and other non-current assets at 18 million dollars so their total assets as of september 30th this year were 950 and a half million dollars Digging a little deeper here, you'll notice the asset purchase agreement Rocket Lab had with Virgin Orbit when that company went bankrupt and Rocket Lab acquired some of Virgin Orbit's assets. So this is part of what's responsible for some of those larger changes we've seen to some of those lines on the balance sheet. Rocket Lab acquired from Virgin Orbit property, plant and equipment of $15.7 million, right of use assets for operating leases of $13.9 million, other non-current assets of $189,000, other non-current or, or sorry, other current liabilities of $1.1 million, non-current operating lease liabilities of $10.4 million, and other non-current liabilities of $1.4 million. So overall, the total purchase price here that Rocket Lab spent was $16.9 million. And that's another source of you know why Rocket Lab's cash has also declined a bit. Of course, there is Rocket Lab's own operations, but then there is also this purchase agreement with Virgin Orbit. As far as the $11.2 million Rocket Lab currently has for sale, it's their two helicopters that they were supposed to be using for the electron recovery strategy, but they're no longer needing these helicopters anymore since they're no longer doing the mid-air helicopter catch. They're simply parachuting the electron first stage down into the ocean softly and then pulling it out of the water with a boat. Finishing up the balance sheet, we've got Rocket Lab's liabilities. Nothing really jumps out a whole lot here. One thing you should pay attention to here is the current installments of long-term borrowings. Those are at $105 million. You'll notice that's a whole lot more than what it was at the end of December, but not because they're borrowing more money necessarily. It's just because these used to be in the non-current portion of their balance sheet here, um, $100 million right there. And those have now moved into the current portion. In the end, Rocket Lab's total liabilities are at $365 million. And subtracting those from the total assets of $950 million gives you that total stockholders equity of $585.8 million. In the end, I think Rocket Lab is a good business and I'm pretty optimistic about their future. Although I think they will probably still need to raise more funds before they reach profitability, just because they are growing at a pretty fast rate still. And 
as they still are unprofitable, those losses that they take every quarter, those are just kind of getting larger and larger. But eventually, those will turn around as their gross margins continue to improve and as those operating margins continue to improve. So eventually, they will reach profitability. I'm pretty sure of that. But it's still going to be some time before we see that point. Another thing you should know is that I am a shareholder of Rocket Lab, so maybe this whole video has been full of biases. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. I've got other videos on Rocket Lab that you should check out as well. I'll see all of you over there, and thank you guys for watching.